Good day. Good day, everybody. How is everybody doing? Welcome to another Road Reflection. It's Storytelling Saturday. We're back in the vehicle. We're back in the car. We're doing this old school. We're doing this classic style. Uh, as you as you might know, uh, this, uh, this, this little series uh, of videos is me talking about issues and stories and uh, things of that sort. And since, since we've been in the quarantine situation, I've been putting them out every single day. Every day except for Thursdays. Thursdays is going to be the day that I try to concentrate on uh, more writing projects, more uh, design and drawing projects, more miscellaneous things, and my podcast, Happy Table Talk. Um, as a friend of mine pointed out, <laughs> doing videos every single day uh, can be quite taxing. And, uh, and, and can be quite intensive, and, and they are. Uh, so I am uh, slowly working on trying to be, take it a little bit easier on myself in that regard. Just kind of being, being chill with, uh, with my body. And, and, and some of you might be excited uh, to see my eyeballs for the first time in, in, a, in a few days, huh? <laughs> That's exciting. Um, the 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 big thing that happened earlier this week is that uh, I'm pretty sure I've I've been straining my eyes staring at the computer screen, and uh, when I've made these videos, I've been wearing my sunglasses, um, you know, as a, a a safety measure um, to decrease the amount of uh, direct screenage to my face. Uh, to my eyes so and it was pretty it was pretty intense because I took Thursday off like totally off um, not just from making the videos like I basically it was like the first day off that I had since uh, Christmas maybe something like that and um, yeah I, I, I just kind of sat and watched a whole bunch of fucking Star Trek and uh, I, I got my exercise ball ready to go and uh did my laundry and you know stuff like that i kind of i kind of concentrated my efforts on doing those things um but i but when i woke up on friday morning there there was like a noticeable difference in my eye um just like the underside of my eye had to have been so uh, there must have been such intense dark circles that i was like holy shit that's crazy um like there was not as intense of a dark circle under my eyes so I've been I've been straining them pretty pretty uh pretty intensely so like last night um I was pretty fired up and uh and it was like 9 30 or something and I was like you know I could sit here and watch a couple videos to take notes um and work on a couple of different pieces but uh but I can also feel like like my eyes were starting to get tired there was like tightness and sensitivity um, and I was like, no, you know, I think I should just kind of call it a night, uh, relax, uh, watch, watch some television from a safe distance and, uh, and go about my day from there. So that's what I did. Um, so I'm trying to be, uh, kinder to myself, I guess it would be, would be the, the, the way to kind of put that. Uh, I don't know. I, I always... <laughs> I, I always tend to like overwork myself and and push myself to a uh, to a brink. Um, I'm I'm still working on those forkfuls, man. I'm I'm really trying hard to to do these daily videos and keep up on all the things and um, survive through this fucking ridiculous situation that we're in. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, still still put out. Uh, the the content that that I feel like I would like to put out I I like the um, I like I like doing the forkfuls you know I like writing um, I, I I think as much as I enjoy doing these road reflections and I do enjoy doing them they are fun uh, they keep me on my toes uh, they allow me to kind of go off the cuff a little bit more and be a little bit freer about things um, I do like the, I do also enjoy like the the process of, of of writing surrounding a particular topic surrounding a historical event things of that nature so 
Uh, I am working on that. I'm also working on, on trying to sort out this uh, format for a stand-up comedy show that I would like to do over Zoom because it is going to look like uh, I'm going to lose um, May as well. Uh, so, you know, uh, initially I was only going to be grounded for like, f- I don't know, four or five weeks and then it became uh, eight and then now it's looking like it's going to be like 12 or 13, maybe 15 weeks or something along those lines. So, you know, the longer this thing goes on, the, the more I'm, I'm, I'm getting kind of itchy um, to, to just do some stand-up. So I think I might, I might write some stuff. I might try to figure out what a good format is for the show. Um, and, uh, and write based on that. Um, yeah. So there's a lot going on. And then I'm also trying to figure out, like, I, I used to do a bunch of design stuff all the time. So I want to get back into that. I also want to, like, design stuff for myself. Like, I, I have some ideas on, like, drawings and, and things of that sort. Uh, push my t-shirt, f- finish my album. So I have enough stuff going on. It's not like I'm, I'm, I'm not doing anything aside from these videos or anything like that. And that's more of not a statement that anybody is t- t- saying that I'm not doing enough. It's more of a, uh, a auditory reminder for me <laughs> uh, to be like, hey, asshole, you have enough shit going on. You're allowed to be kind to yourself and fucking take a night off to watch, uh, you know, some Star Trek movies and um, wish Captain John Luke Picard was your dad. Anyway, whatever. It's fine. Uh <laughs> That's not what we're here for, uh, but that's my check-in for today. That's my, um, that's, you know, it's been a little bit of a, a scrambly rough start to the day. I, I, I have been feeling like I have been, been starting my days early enough. Um, that is a challenge that I have faced in the last week, week and a half. Uh, so that's going to be another goal. I would like to start getting back up uh, as early as I as I usually was, uh, which you know I would get up between like seven thirty or eight and kick off my day between eight thirty and nine a.m. Um, I would like to continue doing that again. I would like to get back into the regular habit of working out. Hence why I purchased an exercise ball um, to kind of vary up my uh, my workouts. Um, and uh, and so you know I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm holding it together. I hope you guys are too, uh, you know, uh, feel free while I'm in the midst of these check-ins to do, to do your own check-in, you know, to, to tell me what's going on with you. If leave, leave a comment, uh, you know, I'm in the chats. Uh, this is, this is recorded in advance so that, uh, you know, um, I can, I can reply back to you guys whilst I watch these too. Sometimes I forget what the fuck I even said. Uh, when I'm, <laughs> when I'm watching this stuff, um, so uh, yeah, leave, leave leave a little little a little how do you do a uh, little hey this is what's going on with me and I'm sure other people will, you know, be like oh man I'm I'm going through the same shit I'm I'm feeling the same way, um, you know, I had a mild bit of existential dread that uh, creeped up. Um, this morning as well as, uh, you know, in the middle of the day yesterday. And it was just sort of this old feeling of, um, why are we even doing this? You know, that, that old nihilism of just like, what does it matter? Everything's all bullshit anyway. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, you kind of have to remind yourself that it's not. Um, and, and, uh, yesterday a a whole, uh, history teacher of mine, um, that was super encouraging and, and, and really like um, would kind of push you to, uh, to look into history and, and form your own opinions and, you know, the, the, try to find um, other parts of the story and things of that sort. Um, super great guy. Uh, you know, he tuned in to, to the Eugene Debs episode uh, and that kind of made my night to be honest, and, and got me out of that funk, and, and, you know, I'm kind of, I don't know, it just reminded me that it does, it it does matter, somebody might, somebody might be paying attention that, uh, you never know, you never know uh, what they might get out of it, and, and that's really what I'm, what I'm hoping for is that these, these videos in, in some way not just entertain you, but also, uh, help, you know, help, help get you through, 
uh, whatever you're getting through. Anyway, so let's get into the story, you guys. Uh, I've uh, I've been babbling for ten minutes. Uh, hopefully, everybody is ready to rock and roll with this story because it's a ghost story, you guys. <gasps> oh, ghost story. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, the reason I wanted to tell this ghost story, uh, I've done it. Uh, very very rarely on stage very very rarely and as you know with these stories that I do in here they're going to be a little bit different than if you have heard them on stage the format's going to be a little bit different I'm a little bit looser there's going to be a couple of details that 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 you didn't hear when I did it on stage if you heard me do it on stage even Uh, but not only that um, but you know it's Easter, the, the the return of the Holy Ghost or whatever. There, there, there's a there, that's that's a loose enough fucking reason for me to do this, right? You know how Jesus came back as like a hot zombie or whatever. That's that's a loose enough reason for me to tell this story, right? That makes a that makes a thematic, doesn't it? Uh, so. Let's put a disclaimer at the top of the story um, that I am an agnostic. What does that mean, right? Uh, It's basically, I don't know. I don't have uh, a definitive answer um, about, you know, the the religious or the spiritual or the or the or the ghastly. Um, Are ghosts real? I don't fucking know. I don't know. Uh, This. This story might give you an, um, a thought into where my head was in that in this particular story, but 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 my answer is I don't know. I've had a couple of experiences that I can't particularly explain, um, but I'm not. It's it's not concrete enough for me to be like for sure, for sure. I saw a spirit, and then I tracked it down. To just a gathering of spirit. It was like a meetup of spirits. And, <laughs> and they are real. And they're just hanging out. <laughs> like I'm not. Uh, I, I'm nowhere near um, that confident in, um, in, in making statements like that. So uh, that's a little disclaimer to the story. Right, uh, but uh, this story, um, I was thinking about it as I was kind of running it through my head this morning. Is I want to say, oh boy, 2014. Yeah, I think 2014. It's either 20 late 2013 or it's 2014. Uh, it was it was the month of November. I do remember that. I do remember it being the month of November. Um, I had, uh, no, it was 2014, wasn't it? Jesus Christ. Uh, hold on, you guys. Now this is gonna fucking bug the shit out of me. If I don't remember this date properly. I'm so, like, I feel like you guys are just like, get to the fucking story! I know, I know who I'm going to. I'm so sorry. Um, trying to remember exactly. It, it was, it was 2013. Yeah, okay, it was 2013. Okay, so November of 2013. So this was seven years ago. Holy fuck. Um, yeah. Uh, so I do remember that it was November because it was uh, it was the second time that I was at doing the Cleveland Comedy Festival. But it was kind of the it was kind of the craziest week um, that I've had in comedy uh, because Monday to Sunday. Um, I had like 16 shows in seven days, something along those lines. Um, it was, it was an insane amount of shows, but not only that, but, uh, I had this, um, you know, I had this part-time job, uh, this side gig that I'd taken up at, uh, at the museum in Pittsburgh. Uh, and my schedule was, um, You know, Sunday through Wednesday, um, and then and then on occasion Saturdays, like when they needed when I was in town and when they needed me on Saturdays, I would uh, I would go work there. So I was able to get the Saturday off, uh, but I wasn't able to get any of the other weekdays off. So basically, what I would do um, is 
I would go to this job. I would get off at five, jump into my car, and drive to Cleveland, and go, and then go do a, a spot. Uh, like Monday, I had like two spots or something. Um, one in Canton, Ohio, which was, and then one in Kent, Ohio, and I think they're like 45 minutes to an hour apart or something, something crazy. Um, and then I went back. So I, I did this a couple days out of the week. And uh, at the end of the week, I had a weekend featuring at this, you know, sort of B comedy club uh, called the Lake Ontario Playhouse. I, I, you know, I remember the name of the thing. It was six hours from Pittsburgh. So um, it was Friday, Saturday, two shows. And then on Sunday, I was going to drive back to Pittsburgh and I was going to do a show that my friend had set up. Um, as sort of like a fundraisery show for uh, I think like a youth shelter and um, so you know I I, kind of like the last three days of this thing were going to be relatively intense and um, I also had a college gig that week the night before, like on Thursday, I had a college gig along with the Cleveland Comedy Festival show. So I had like a daytime Cleveland Comedy Festival show, went and did that, came back to Pittsburgh, picked up a friend, went down to West Virginia. And I was dating a girl in college at the time. And uh, uh, that, well, she was in college, uh, you know, and so I hadn't really gotten to see her a whole lot this week. Uh, so the plan was like Sunday night, right? But we kept in touch throughout the week. Um, so I went and did the college gig, drove back to Pittsburgh, dropped my friend off for, uh, from, you know, uh, the gig was in West Virginia, and then woke up the next day and made this fucking six hour drive uh, to. Um, Sackets Harbor, New York, uh, to the Lake Ontario Playhouse. And on the drive, something strange happened. Um, I got into the state of New York, and uh, I get pulled over. And I was panicking. I was freaking out because I was getting pulled over, right? Uh, you know, the, the fucking flashing lights went off and I was like, fuck, this is, I don't want to have to deal with this. This seems so unnecessary, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't even going that fast. Um, like I'm very careful about, uh, you know, how fast I'm going on the highways and stuff. I usually never go, um, you know, more than five over because, uh, it's just, you know, I, I just never, it's just not worth it. To me, I've gotten speeding tickets and stuff before, and they're just not, it's just not worth it. So, uh, seeing that this was happening, I was just like, "What the fuck is going on? This is ridiculous!" And I pull over to to the side of the road to to where, or, or at least you know where where I thought was the side of the road, and I look back and I see the flashing light, and I'm just panicking, you know, and I'm doing one of these, and I'm just kind of like staring. And I'm waiting for the fucking cop to show up at my window, and I don't, and I, and I don't, and it's been like a, a, a good solid two minutes, and I'm like, where the fuck is this guy? And I look back, and there's no cop car. I was like, that's really fucking bizarre because it could have sworn there was a fucking cop car behind me, right? I was like, all right, what the fuck? This is crazy. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Let's just get the fuck out of here. So I left. Um, I get to the, I get to the venue and, uh, and I meet the owner and the owner's like, Hey, let me show you the condo. Sometimes, sometimes when you work comedy clubs, you get a little condo. Uh, and sometimes they're very nice. Uh, and sometimes they are horrific. Uh, uh, sometimes they're just literally abandoned homes. (laughs) That's happened to me before. Um, like, the Church of Satire does put you up in a pretty nice nice little place. Um, the Church of Satire Comedy Club out in Hanover, Pennsylvania. 
uh, lovely room, fantastic club. Uh, please support them through all this all this craziness. Uh, but they they put you up in a nice place. You get, get you got an apartment with the with a fridge and an active kitchen and a bedroom uh, with and, and you know and there's like a TV in there and stuff. Uh, very nice, very nice apartment. Um, this place at the at the Lake Ontario Playhouse was right above the club, and uh, and they're like, oh, just you know, if you go off the showroom. It's the first. It's the first door on your left, and you take the steps all the way up. Um, and usually, the features room is the first room. Uh, and I was like, "All right, cool." And as I'm kind of walking up the stairs, I mean, there's shit all around me, right? And it and it it does have a little bit of like a horror movie ring to it, right? There's just like old shit everywhere. Um, there's uh, there's windows. Uh, along the steps and they're just covered with creepers you know just like it, it just kind of rings like it's an eerie like the setting is very eerie and it's directly above uh, the, the the showroom right directly above um, the venue itself right so uh, you know I go up set my stuff down in, and it's a very nice room, you know, very comfortable bed. I got a TV, a space heater that's uh, a high-powered space heater. You know, this is fucking upstate New York. And in November, it's like 10 degrees outside and shit. Uh, and uh, I meet the owner, and the owner kind of gives me the spiel of, of the place. And he's like, oh, yeah, this used to be an old theater, blah, blah, blah. And then I start looking around and, and reading, um, you know, some of the pictures on the wall and this building has been around since like 1904 and it was it was this uh renowned kind of playhouse that they would do these these renowned plays and then they started uh developing a program where they would do original plays and they would do these run of original plays um and then you know and then the depression hit and then they came back and they were back to doing these playhouses um, and then, uh, uh, you know, they, um, they eventually, uh, shut down again and, and opened back up as, as a, a playhouse and a comedy club. And then it just became the comedy club. So a nice little history of the place, right? Uh, and I was like, all right. So, you know, we're, we're getting closer to showtime. I meet the headliner, Mike Stork, another very funny comedian. Um, you know, a, a great guy. I haven't had a chance to catch up with Mike in in a little bit um but you know super great guy uh very very nice uh very nice guy very funny comedian i really enjoyed a lot of his jokes and so you know we 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 sit we we're chit and chatting uh bullshitting as comedians do before the show and the first show kicks off and you know there was a a birthday table it was a woman's 30th birthday. And the owner went up to, to host. I'm putting that in quotes, right? He went up to quote unquote host. What he, I mean, he didn't really do anything. Like, he didn't really do material or anything. He just kind of went up uh, and he talked about the club. He gave the little announcements and he was like, oh, it's your birthday. And the whole table was like, Rah! right? And I was like, all right. So he kind of addressed it. But when I went on stage, Everybody within the party was virtually hammered. Like, particularly two or three dudes were just fucking shithoused. Well, I mean, like, the show hasn't even started and they were, they were shithoused. The birthday girl was not. She was fucking sober and, uh, like, I'm so sorry. This fucking blows. I can't believe that these guys are acting this way, kind of. You know, and her there was like another friend that was sitting next to her, and she was like, "I'm so sorry," kind of thing. So they were a little rambunctious, they were a little rowdy. The opposite side, and there was like um, at least ten of them uh, in this group, right? And, and the other side of the room, what like they just were like, these guys are fucking disruptive, and uh, you know, kind of a bunch of assholes. Uh, so. I basically took it upon myself that my 25-minute set was just going to be to kind of 
chill them out to, to kind of get them to shut the fuck up. Like, you know how you have to do that to, to drunk people? It's just kind of like let them burn themselves out. So that's what I was going to do, you know. And I had a bunch of, like, uh, pro-gay rights jokes uh, that I was doing at the time. Um, and they were, like, on drunk time. So I did those jokes, and I was, like, moving to the next part. And then one of the drunk guys said something, um, like, we're gay. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, what are you going to do? We're gay. And I was like, that's cool, man. That's awesome. How long have you been together? How long have you guys been a couple? And he's like, oh, no, he's married. And I was like, wait, are you guys married? Or are you coming out of the closet to your wife? Like, what the fuck is going on? So I was just like, I'll talk to them for a minute. And then it was starting to become very evident that, like, okay, these people need to shut the fuck up. Um, and, and, And they made some fucking remark at me about, like, uh, what what would I do if they hit on me? Uh, and I, I said something to the effect of, you wish you could have something like this. And they were like, oh my God! Uh, and, and then I think the only way that I could shut them up was I said something to the effect of, well, some, would, uh, would this gentleman please put his dick in his mouth so he'll shut the fuck up for the rest of the show? And then like everybody got, everybody was like, thank you fucking finally to tell them to shut up. And so when that happened, like, the joke became too real for them. Um, and uh, and they were just like, what, but, but, we're not, but we're not really, but are you, like, saying we're really gay, though? And they kind of, like, shut the fuck up. And I was like, good God, finally, right? So I finally got them to settle, and I did my closer, and I was off the fucking stage, right? And I was like, great. And, the, and, and Mike comes up to me, and he goes, hey, man. Thanks for fucking hooking that up. Thanks for fucking, you know, getting them to shut the fuck up. And I was like, yeah, man. Uh, and he's like, I know you, I know you like kind of took a hit there. But like, I appreciate it. And I was like, ah, it's cool. It's cool. Whatever. Right. Um, I kind of did my job as a feature. So as if we're having this conversation, the fucking host goes back up and he re-engages the people that I just shut up. Like, I just got them to shut up and settle down. And the host, like, re-engages them. And Mike just looks at me and he goes, well, you did your best. <laughs> and, like, the rest of the show, he just had to, like, play babysitter to them. So it was a fucking nightmare. So, you know, after the show... Um, the, you know, I you, you I, I had like two free drinks, so I got two free drinks, cause, and I was exhausted, and, you know, we were bullshitting outside and stuff, uh, and Mike was like, uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna go get something to eat from this Waffle House we saw on the highway, and I was like, I don't know, man, I gotta get some sleep, I'm, I'm pretty toasted, it's fucking 2.30 in the morning right now, um, so I go up to the room, and I was like, well, I'll see you in the morning. He's like, yeah, you'll see me in the morning. So I go to bed. I, and I passed them. I passed right out. Um, like, I did not... Uh, I, I, I think I literally turned on the TV. I found Comedy Central. And then uh, I fell asleep with the phone in my hand. That's sort of the way that uh, the night played out for me. Um, so <laughs> I woke up the next day. And I'm kind of just milling around. Uh, you know, kind of just, uh, just kind of waking up, getting my day going, you know, and, uh, and I get a message from Mike and he was like, Hey man, um, are you, are you at the condo? I was like, yeah, I'm at the condo. I'm, I, I just woke up, you know, I'm, I'm about to, ju- I'm about to jump in the shower get my day going here and he was like okay like do you want to grab some food and I was like sure I'll come grab some food we went to a Cracker Barrel so I met them at a Cracker Barrel we're sitting there and we're bullshitting and and Mike looks at me and he goes so you stayed at that condo and I was like yeah man like why is that such a fucking surprise to you and he was like um, now nothing strange happened I was like what not really 
And the, I mean, like, the only weird thing that had happened was when I was taking a shower, um, the, the water temperature was, you know, acting goofy and shit. Like, at one point, I turned it, I, I was trying to adjust the temperature, and either it was getting way too fucking hot, or it would just be, like, just horrifically cold, right? And I just figured old pipes, fucking old pipes, right? And I was like, that's, like, the weirdest thing that's happened. And he was like, that's it? Like, you didn't see anything? You didn't hear anything? And I was like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what are you asking me right now? And he was like, no, I, I just, um, you know, I put that I'm, I'm playing this club and a bunch of people told me not to stay at the condo. And I kind of joked it off. And and then Mike apparently got a message from a, a, a trusted comedy friend of his that was like, yeah, man, don't stay at the condo. And I was like, what was the reason? What was the reason that they gave you? Did they give you a fucking reason for you not to stay at the condo? And they're like, and Mike was like, I don't know. And they just said it was weird. And I was like, all right, I have an older sister. I know how this game is is played. You're not you're not getting me, fella. Okay, you're not getting me. I know I know this game, huh? Scared the fucking kid, you know? And then you fucking, I'm on edge, you know? And then and then you're hiding in the closet with a Chucky mask on or something. He pop out. I maybe I maybe pee a little bit and cry for like a minute. You take a picture, post it on the Facebooks. So I know this game. I know how this works. I'm not new to the block, guy. Okay. So I just kind of was just like, yeah, you're fucking with me. I, you know, go fuck yourself. I was like, where'd you stay? And he was like, dude, dude, dude we got a hotel. Like he was with his, he was with a, a, a friend. Um, and he was like, we just got a hotel, you know, because we, we needed to get some sleep and we weren't going to fuck around with that shit. So I was like, all right, whatever. So I went back to the, you know, I went back to the, the club. And I walk up and I see the owner. The owner and I get talking. And he, uh, he informs me that there's actually a third floor above, uh, above the condo area where it's sort of like a, a giant studio, a giant like loft studio. And he was like, yeah, we're kind of cleaning it up up there. My brother lives in, um, in New York. He's going to move back. He's having a kid. Uh, so he's going to come here first and kind of get settled and, you know, I'm going to give him a job and. Uh, he'll kind of be like the groundskeeper to the club and, and take care of a couple other things around town. Then, you know, him and his, his girlfriend is going to move and they're going to they're gonna live up there with the kid. Uh, and I was like, oh, well, that should be exciting for the kid. And uh, he was like, yeah, sure, I guess. <laughs> All right. I was like, that's cool, man. And, he was, and I was like, so no one's up there. And he was like, yeah, no one's, no one's living up there. You know, um, when this was a theater that used to be like the big storage room or something, I was like, oh, that's, okay, that's, that's pretty cool. And I go in the room, go back to my little room, and uh, I basically uh, just sit there and do some work. And I noticed the time. I was like, oh, I should probably get ready and go down to the showroom and, you know, um, I don't know, just fucking hang out down there, get ready for the show. Uh, and so I go down, and I get a, and I meet the owner's kid who's going to do a little stand-up, is what, I, is what I've been told. All right, he's going to do a little stand-up. I was like, all right, that's cool. So I sit there and I talk to him about comedy for a bit, and then I get a text from Mike, and uh, Mike was like, hey, can you go upstairs and, and go to the headliner room and kind of just uh, turn on the space heater? Um, we're gonna come in and, and kind of try to take a nap before the show. Uh, we're we're gonna we're, we're we're gonna drive through the night. We're gonna go to Ottawa right after this. And I was like, oh yeah, sure, you know, no problem. Why not? So that's what I did. And uh, I go in, turn on the space heater, go back down, see Mike. I give him a wave. You know, he goes up to the room. 
goes to take a nap. And I'm sitting there and I'm bullshitting with this kid for a little bit. And it finally comes in. You know, doors are about to be open. I don't see Mike. And I go, I'm sure he's on his way down. And it's about maybe 20 minutes till showtime. And I still don't see Mike. And I was like, I gotta go fucking get him. I gotta, I gotta wake him up. The show's gonna start soon. So, uh, I do that. I go and I walk into the showroom and Mike comes out. And he goes, hey, there you are. And I was like, eh, what the fuck is, that's a weird greeting. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, what's up? And he was like, weren't you just upstairs? I was like, no, I've been down here for a few hours. I've been talking to the kid. Uh, and he was, and Mike was like, no, I could have sworn you were upstairs, man. And he looks to the owner who's in the showroom and he goes, were you up there? And he was like, no. I've, I've been, you know, setting up the room, doing the sound check. And he was like, I could have sworn somebody was upstairs. And he was like, I don't think anybody's been through the showroom. Um, you know, it would have been crazy. Uh, I would have seen them. I've been, you know, so, so the owner's like, there's no fucking way. I'm like, I haven't fucking seen anybody go into the showroom. I was like, what happened? Right. And Mike was like, Dude, I heard, I heard these footsteps, right? I heard those, these footsteps kind of like uh, pacing back and forth. And I was like, okay. And so I thought it was you. I thought, I thought you were nervously pacing to get ready for your set. And uh, so I called out. I called out. I was like, Chris, Chris, is that you? And then I saw these shadows of these footsteps walk to the door. And I could see the shadows under the door. And I said, Chris, is that, are you, is that you? Are you okay? And, it, and I could see the shadows, and then I heard it run away. And I was like, you can go fuck yourself, Mike, okay? Just, I'm, I, I know this game. I get what you're doing. I'm not playing it. I'm not playing a game. I got a show to get ready for. I'm not playing your game, right? So I kind of figured, it's fucking with me. So we do the show, right? And the show goes fine. It's, it's much better um, than uh, the show before. Uh, I think somebody bought me a shot while I was on stage. Uh, which was a uh, fucking nightmare because I don't do shots on stage. Don't do that to me. Uh, don't send a shot on stage. I hate it. <laughs> I really appreciate it. It's very nice, and I will gladly, like, do one after the show or whatever. And even then, I'm just kind of like, ah, oh, God, I'm not 20 anymore. But, but like, sending a shot to stage is just, like, it's just such a bad news bear situation when it comes to me. <laughs> Like I'm not good at it. I don't. I don't like taking shots. Um, it just, yeah, it just it feels icky. Um, like I know I'm a full-grown adult man that just said icky, but uh, but that's kind of what it is. <laughs> I don't like it. Please don't do that. <laughs> Please don't do that to me. If we ever get back to live performances, uh, so you know these fucking this girls' night out situation is happening in front of me and they send a shot up to the stage and they're all being, you know, girls night outy or whatever. And I do my set. Mike does his set. It goes great. We hang out by the merch table. People come over. They want to buy us drinks. Mike is going to be driving, so he's not going to be drinking. And, uh... You know, so I have I have one or two drinks, and I'm like, okay, cool, hanging out, whatever. And so we wrap everything up around 11:30, 11:45. Um, we go, out, you know, Mike and I go up to the showroom. Mike, his friend, and I go up to the sh- uh, into the showroom and up into the condo area, and and uh, you know, kind of say our goodbyes, like, hey, let's keep in touch, blah blah blah. Here's my phone number, blah blah blah. Uh, Let me know when you're in Baltimore. Let me know when you're in Pittsburgh. Happy to help. Happy to help. Uh, And Mike's like, hey, we're going to grab our stuff. And we're actually going to jet set to Ottawa so we can, you know, not we can get get through that border um, quicker. I was like, yeah, man, I'm going to I'm going to sleep. I'm going to get up tomorrow and get up pretty early and and hit the road. So, you know, Mike left. And at this point, I had come to the realization that I'm the only one in the building. Nobody stays in the building, right? Uh, 
None of the staff fucking stay in the building. The owner doesn't stay in the building. Is and, and and Mike's gone, so it's just fucking me in this empty old theater. And I try to kind of put that thought in the back of my mind, and uh, I get I get into I get into bed, and I'm getting ready to like go to sleep. You know, I'm shitting and chatting with the girlfriend, uh, and. I'm kind of doing one of one of these, just huh, huh. Like I'd fall asleep and I would wake back up, and I would text back, and then I would eventually drift into into slumberland and and then wake back up. Probably did that for about 20, 25 minutes, um, and all of a sudden, I woke up like the like all of the air from my lungs had just been removed right this whole like <gasps> like one of those like <gasps> like I'm like you know and I didn't understand why and I, and I like just got startled awake and I start hearing these creaks and I was like okay I look over at the time it's about 1 a.m. close to 1 a.m. I was like okay um, I start hearing these creaks and then they start getting more consistent uh, if I was to put a rhythm to them they sounded like footsteps coming from above me now if you remember above me was that uh, empty room that hadn't fully been set up yet and uh, and I was like okay old building wood creaking cold outside it's probably what it is i'm not uh i'm not this is ridiculous you're you're kind of you're you're driving yourself a little crazy here and then they keep happening and then they start happening a little bit faster and a little bit louder and i'm trying to go to sleep and then for whatever reason you know i've i'm trying to put these creaks out of my mind i just get up and i go i gotta get the fuck out of here I gotta get the fuck out of here. Something, something in me is like fucking telling me that I gotta fucking go. I gotta fucking go, right? So I get up, and in my moment of sheer panic, I very quietly put everything that I have into my bag, grab my book bag, grab my duffel bag that I have. And I grab that and I put it over my shoulder. And I look over at the door. I don't know what it is, right? Like, my mind's going crazy at this point. Where I'm like, oh my, holy shit. Like, what if, what if the fucking thing is outside the door? What if whatever this is, is outside the door and it's waiting. It's waiting for me to come out. Like, it can't make itself into the quarters. But it's waiting for me to fucking come out, right? It's waiting. It's, you know, this is like the ghost of some retired actor that, that, that like wanted to play the Phantom of the Opera but like just didn't have the chops to be the Phantom uh, so he so, so he like killed himself upstairs That's and then he's just like been here the whole fucking time and he's just looking for somebody to like run lines with and if you don't run lines with him it, it, you know until he gets the part he's never gonna leave but he's never gonna get the part cause like that was like a hundred years ago and this is and this is the guy Right, like this is this is who you gotta fucking deal with, uh, and, and I was like, all right, if there's something outside this door, I have to be prepared to jump out this window. So I unlock the window, right, just so I can run, open it, and jump out of it. Um, that's where my head's at, because <laughs> it's like, like I'm in panic mode. Uh, So I'm like, all right, here we go. Count to 10. Open the door, and I just fucking bolt. And I run out the door. I run down the stairs. uh, And I run through the showroom to the side door so I can get to my car a lot fucking faster. Right? And I literally jump kick the door. I, like, knocked over a couple tables. I'm pretty sure. 
and I jump kick the door and I jump outside and I, I jump off the landing uh, and I get to my car. I, <laughs> this guy's fucking ridiculous. Um, I jump out, I get to my car and I pull out and as I'm pulling out, I look up to the window that I was going to jump at. Right. And I'm not, this is not going to be one of those stories where it's like, and there he was, the guy in the Phantom of the Opera mask. Right. Like if that was a thing, like I'd be telling the story all the fucking time. Um, but it, it, it wasn't, it was just a, a, a very clear awareness that had I jumped out the door, had I jumped out that window, I would have 100% at best, at best broken either one or both of my legs. And just been laying there in fucking 10 degree weather, probably without my cell phone, because that would have probably been broken as well. Uh, just fucking laying there in, in excruciating amounts of pain. Like that would have been the reality that I would have had to live with, right? That's the choice that I was willing to make just out of sheer fear of things. And, um, and it was just, it was not comforting at all, and and then I fucking booked it out of there. Like the second I saw that, I had this realization, and I fucking booked it. I just drove like a bat out of hell, you know. I called my I called my girlfriend at the time, and I was like, "Hey, this thing happened." And it's like 1.30 in the morning, 1.30, 1.45, somewhere around somewhere in that time frame, and she was like, "What are you talking about?" And I was like, "I don't know, but I'm pretty sure." Like, I felt something. I don't feel comfortable anymore. I got to get home. I got to get home. She's like, you're not going to get home till like 7 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, I don't care. I'm trying to, I got to get out of here. This is crazy. And she's like, no, turn around and go back to the fucking, go, go back. You got to go back. And I was like, no, I'm not going to go back. Freaking the fuck out. And I drove, um... I drove all the way to the New York Pennsylvania border and right before I crossed into Pennsylvania I kind of just I, I wasn't able to uh, keep my eyes open so I pulled off at a rest stop and uh, you know fell asleep for a few hours I, I did, maybe around like five o'clock in the morning I woke up around uh, 6 30 something along those lines got a cup of coffee and fucking hightailed it back to Pittsburgh uh, got home around 10 or 11, cleaned up, texted my girlfriend, and she was like, so are we still, like, gonna see each other tonight? And I was like, yes, 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 I'm, I'm just gonna take a nap, go do the show, and then I'll, uh, you know, I'll come pick you up, and, and we'll hang out. And so I, like, I'm still kind of panicked about this whole situation that just happened. You know, because I like I don't I, like I don't know I don't know what I just felt, but what I felt was you know very real to me, and so I went and I did the show with my friend, right? We did the show. The show was fun. It was a really really fun show. It was really nice to see my friend. That I hadn't seen in quite some time. Little Spotted Bear, great, another great comedian in the in the Minneapolis uh, area. I think he's still in the Minneapolis area. But uh, yeah, and um, got back, hanging out with the girlfriend. We're just sitting there, you know. We're twiddling on the computer. She's doing some of her, her schoolwork. I'm taking care of a few things that I clearly wasn't able to take care of because of this uh, situation, right? This panic that I had uh, brought upon myself. And she turns around and looks at me and she goes, uh, hey, so if it was a ghost that you experienced, you're probably fine. And I was like, hey, what's happening right now? What are we, what are we doing right now? She's like, well, you know, the thing you just experienced. And I was like, what? Well, in the theater, if it was a ghost, you're probably fine. Because ghosts 
Well, they can't leave. They're kind of tied down to one, one place. But if it was a demon, uh, it probably followed you. And I was like, what are you saying right now? What are the words? What, what's happening? Why, why is this happening? What are you doing? And she's like, no, I'm just saying, like, if it was a ghost, you're fine. Because it's probably just tied to the building. But if it was a demon that was living in that building, it probably followed you. I was like, no, why? Why is this happening? Why are you doing this? She's like, no, I'm just saying, you know, just something to think about. I was like, oh, oh, something something to think about? Okay, and I stood up, and I went over, and I shut my window, and I locked it, and then I walked over to the door, and I locked the door and put a chair in front of it. Because you know how demons... um, very polite uh, mythical creatures very polite if we know anything about demons it's always they're polite and they knock and they're like hey I'm here to kind of take your soul and you're like oh but I don't uh, want you to and they're like are you sure about that like can I come in and kind of talk to you about it and and you're like no I don't want you to come in and they're like well I don't want to barge in that's rude you know how you've read books where the demons are just like well I don't want to break in I mean I have the power to I literally uh, cast uh, spells um, and steal people's souls, but I don't want—I don't want to be rude about it, you know. I'm not—I'm uh, not an asshole. I'm a demon. Uh, you know how they do that? <laughs> and I looked at her and I was like, "We are sleeping with the lights on tonight," because I was like, "I'm like a five-year-old at this point," point. and she was like, "Oh, I can't sleep with the lights on," and I was like, "You did this to yourself." Why would you say that? And she's like, I don't know, because it's like a thing that it might be. <laughs> I just sleep like a fucking five-year-old. So, here's the thing, is like, I talked about this for a solid fucking two weeks. <laughs> like, it's the only thing I would talk about. And finally, um, I, I was telling this story to uh, one of the co-workers at the museum. <laughs> And uh, he looked at me and he goes, huh. I was like, what's hump? What is this? Are you going to tell me the fucking demon thing again? Are you going to do the demon thing? Because I don't, I don't think I can, I can do the demon thing. And he's like, no, no. It's a, it's a sociobiological thing. Uh, it's a fight, a fight or flight response from the lizard brain. Uh, like, you probably don't come from a bunch of fight people. And I was like, What? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I don't think you probably come from, like, a bunch of fight people because uh, what, it, what it probably was, the creaks that you probably heard, you said it was an old building, you said you had problems with the shower and not maintaining a, a temperature in the shower. Uh, well, that could be because, um, you know, your, uh, the, the cold air from the outside is rushing in from an open pipe and it's causing the pipe to like expand and contract and it's causing the wood to do the same thing and that's probably what what the creeks were uh and in your head it's this like old biological response of fight or flight and you don't come from fight people you come from flight people and I was like okay I don't know if that makes me feel better (laughs) did you just call me a pussy (laughs) Are you saying I'm a coward? Is that what you're is that what you're assuming? Because I'll fight I'll fight you right I'll because you're a corporeal thing. You're you're like a corporeal being. And I'll I'll, I'll I can see you. Okay? The uh, the no you you know what the the ghost the ghost is wrong because the ghost is using an unfair advantage of not showing itself to me. And that's not fair. So, so by the end of it, I was like, great. So either I come from a, a huge line of flight people or there could have been a demon that followed me from Sackets Harbor, New York. I don't know. I have, I have no idea. Um, the The rational side of me, every time that that I that I tell the story, it, you know, during the daytime, 
uh, when the sun is out and I'm and I'm surrounded by like other people and uh, uh, y- you know I'm I I, I, I tend to think uh, oh yeah it's um, you know it's just it's probably just a pipe and I probably just had like a deep seated uh, very intense biological response. And then if I tell the story at, at the nighttime, uh, and then I think about my life, where there's been like things that haven't gone particularly great, I'm like demon. That's probably it's the demon, the fucking demon, fucking witching hour demon that fucking followed me from this goddamn comedy club because I needed to make five hundred dollars. Like this is fucking bullshit. <laughs> You know, it's just uh, it's just what your fucking mind chooses to do in these certain situations, <laughs> and uh, and I don't have an answer because I don't fucking know. I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't particularly have a, a a real response to to that. But I did talk to some comics because because here's the thing is is because of what it was, um, and what an impact it had on me. I I kind of needed to like try to find some answers. I think I'm at a point now after fucking seven years uh, that I feel kind of okay, right? Like, um, I'm okay not knowing the real answer and I'm okay it being uh, a biological response that I come from flight people and not fight people. Um, You know, I'm part of flight club. I'm part of flight club where I'm like, this isn't worth it, and then we just fucking run. (laughs) That's me. It's a whole book of that. It's a whole book of just like, we could be anarchists, but maybe we shouldn't. We could blow up the credit card buildings, but maybe there's a different way to do it. (laughs) That's where I come from, right? Um, But I talked to a couple other comics throughout the years. I've talked to a few people that have played this room, that have played this club. And they're all like, it's 100% haunted. It's 100% ghosts, bro. It's super fucking ghosts. Like, it's definitely ghosts. Uh, some of us, There's one comic that told me that they saw, like, an old fucking World War II soldier or some shit. And I was like, that's crazy pants. Like, that is, um, that is just, like, I don't... It, sometimes it's also just, like, you hear the stories and you're in that space... And, and you kind of, like, play tricks on yourself. Um, so, you know, plus the other thing for me that week was, like, I was fucking bananas exhausted. Bananas exhausted. It's the most amount of shows I've done in, in one week's time. It's the most amount of driving that I've done in one week's time. Uh, so... <laughs> You know, yeah, I, I'm sure that I fucking heard some shit and panicked out of just sheer, uh, utter exhaustion. But I don't know. What do you guys think? What do, you, do you guys think it's ghosts? Or do you guys think that I'm, I'm just, uh, I come from a, a, a line of flight people, which you can call cowardly, but I call smart. I call knowing, calling it when I see it. <laughs> Saying this is not a battle worth fighting. Live to fight another day. <laughs> what do you guys think it is? Um, leave, leave some comments about that. Um, you know, t- tell me your thoughts on, on whether whether you 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 believe that it's a ghost. And if you have if you have a ghost experience yourself, um, holy or otherwise, maybe it was Jesus trying to talk to me. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's getting close to Christmas. Maybe maybe he couldn't form his powers fully until it was it was Christmas day and he was trying to just say here's what you need to get your girlfriend for Christmas you stupid idiot uh, I don't know maybe that could be that could have been a thing I don't know uh, but it is an experience that uh, you know I, I've kind of kept uh, uh, close close to my heart close to my heart uh, and, and, you know it's a story that I've, that I've kind of at some point thought about. Um, it's, it's, I think this is the truest, like, closest thing to a real ghost experience that I've had, uh, that is, that has creeped me out to a level where I decided to, uh, run out of a comedy condo and jump kick a door and drive, like, six and a half hours back home in the dead of night. Uh, so, 
you know, it just shows you like, to me, it's also a testament of how powerful fear is. What what a very truly powerful emotion that is, um, because because that's what it is. It's a very powerful emotion, uh, and uh, and you know, trying to kind of control, like have a little bit of control over that is um, is important. Is important, uh, but. Uh, but that's the story, you guys. That is the uh, that is the ghost, the, the ghoulish ghost story uh, for the for for Easter, uh, the loose connection to Easter that this story is gonna have. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I hope you guys will tune in again uh, if you have not checked out uh, the videos that I have been doing. I have been talking a lot about um, strikes and uh, uh, people's movements and things of that sort, uh, along with, you know, just news, the, d- the daily news, trying to fight the minutia of just, you know, things about the virus on a, on a constant basis, um, trying to kind of con- expand the consciousness a little bit beyond that, um, and what we can do to, to build solidarity with each other. That's something that I'm, I'm always talking about. Um, I... I on a last little bit of, uh, of note, um, I do want to mention this. Uh, I, in, in a lot of the videos, I keep talking about how like these strikes aren't really talked about in, uh, in our history classes, in our education system. Um, and I want to say this. Um, the education system, I think, is a problem. Teachers, educators, individuals, are not. I think there are a lot of individual teachers uh, that even even when I was in high school, uh, teachers that taught me um, highly encourage and value critical thought. The system, on the other hand, in my opinion, does not do that. The system is not built for it. Um, I know plenty of teachers that have tried to encourage that critical thought and have gotten uh, chastised for it. So when I when I kind of criticize the uh, the education system in and of itself, I am criticizing the system. I am not criticizing criticizing individual educators. Um, the, I'm always going to be on the side of of the individual educator. The system that uh, that pushes you to not tell, give the full story, not encourage critical thought, not encourage the questions. That's what I'm against. That's what I'm going to rail uh, and push back against. And a lot of educators do the same thing. A lot of educators uh, also push back against that sort of stuff. So uh, I just kind of wanted to put that out there, make that distinction, because I do think that distinction is important uh, to, to make there. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, if you enjoyed it, as always, like, share. Make sure you're subscribed to the channels. Make sure you're subscribed to the page. Make sure you're getting notifications um, uh, to 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 when I'm putting out videos because I'm putting out videos pretty pretty darn regularly, you guys, pretty darn regularly, and uh, and sharing is what is going to uh, help, is what is going to um, get these get get these conversations out there. Get you know these are things that you're not going to hear um, in corporate media. You're not going to hear this stuff in. Uh, mainstream media so uh, I, I'm very dependent on you guys sharing this out um, so uh, I, I appreciate it I appreciate you guys tuning in and, and, and all that uh, if you have the ability to please donate uh, it, it is it is not a mandatory requirement to enjoy these videos uh, I'm going to be putting them out for everybody to enjoy I know a lot of us are, are in the same position a lot of us have lost a majority of our income. Some of us have not. Um, and if this is where you uh, you would you would like to to make a contribution, uh, one time or by becoming a sustaining member, uh, I very much would appreciate that. Uh, that would be very very cool. And to the people that have already become sustaining members, to the people that have already uh, made a, a one time contribution. Uh, thank you so much. I, that it is, it is uh, very, very appreciated. And, uh, um, you know, thank you for everybody tuning in and, and sharing and uh, all, that, all that fun stuff. 
Uh, I am thoroughly lost in this drive, so I'm going to find my way out uh, of here. Um, and tomorrow we'll be going live on the Facebook page around noon. So till then, we'll see you on the road. Bye.